Hi all. In this video, let's learn about JavaScript interview questions. So this is a part two of the interview questions. So let's discuss these questions today. So the first question is why is semantic code is important. So what does semantic code means? Semantic code means it will explain clearly. It will describe what is the content is about both to the browser and to the developer. So for example, if you take non semantic elements like div and span, it will not tell anything about the content which we are using. Whereas coming to the semantic elements like form, table, article, section. So these things will clearly explain us what is the content about. So this is what about the semantic code means. So now let's understand the benefits of using the semantic code. For example, we have a website. We can develop the website in this way by using the semantic tags, semantic elements, header, nav, section, article, footer, and a sidebar, okay, a side element. A website can be built with the help of the semantic elements. And also you can build the same website with only just using the divs as well. So how they look in the browser would be the same if you use divs or if you use the semantic code also, the appearance of the website would be the same in the browser but the content what is the content we are using it will not describe in the divs it will not be that much clear what is the content but if you use the semantic code the content would be very much clear so now let's discuss the benefits of using the semantic code the first benefit is semantic code is very much straightforward for the people to understand so see it is a header a nav footer. So if there is something wrong, you can easily understand it and you can easily modify at that point. If you use just divs throughout the website to build this type of website, if you use divs, you need to find figure out which div you are going to modify, which div you got exactly an issue. So you need to figure out that. So the first benefit is it would be easy and easy to understand and modify. Now let's discuss a second benefit, the search engines. It needs to understand what is our content. So how it appears is same for non semantic elements and semantic elements. But for the search engine, it needs to understand what is the content is about. So then only based on this, it will clearly rank our website and it, it will properly place our website as per the search engine. Okay, it means search engine needs to know what is the content about. So that's the reason if you keep all this semantic code in a proper way it can understand what it can understand and it will help us to improve and rank better in the search engine so this is a second benefit and coming to the third benefit this is like many of them these days uh, like a uh, visually challenged people they will rely on browser to read to speech the pages so uh, the people who can't see properly they will rely on the browser so that browser can read the pages back to them. So this happens usually, but if you not use a semantic code, the browser can't read the pages properly. It will interrupt in the middle. If you use a semantic code in a proper way, it will read the pages back to the uh, visually challenged people in a very uh, good manner. So this is all about like, if you use semantic code, it will improve the accessibility. We call this as the accessibility. So that's the reason we need to use semantic code to improve the accessibility, to improve the search engine optimization, to have a better understanding of the content, both by the browsers and the developers. So these are the important benefits we'll be getting if we use the semantic code. So this is all about the first question. So coming to the second question. So second question is about what's the difference between async and differ attributes? So let's discuss about them. So before that, we need to understand a normal script. How does a normal script loads into the Java, a normal JavaScript code, how it will be loaded. And thereafter, we'll try to understand what happens if we keep async attribute and what happens if you keep differ attribute to the same scripts. Okay, now let's understand that. So for that, so if you try to, whenever the, our web page loads when start it will start parsing the html if you use a normal script so in this case if you use this script will be loaded like this when starting the parsing of html if the script is appeared it will download and thereafter it will execute the javascript till then what happens we are blocking 
the render would be blocking so this is the ideal time html will not parse during this time during the downloading time and executing of the javascript time it will be passing so it means you are literally you are you are stopping the rendering you are stopping the rendering once it is downloaded and executed thereafter the passing of the html will be continued it will be resumed so this happens for the normal scripts so in order to avoid this in order to eliminate the render blocking problems we can use this async and defer attributes so these are the attributes we'll be using so if you use these attributes what exactly we are saying if you use async and defer attributes we are saying to the browser we are indicating to the browser to download these scripts at a lower priority without interrupting the rendering of the page so that is what we are going to tell to the browser if you use async and defer attributes we are telling to the browser we are instructing to the browser to download these files on lower priority and not to block the rendering so that is what the async and defer attributes does so what's the difference between these two so let's see so the difference is async if you keep async attribute what happens it will download the javascript code parallelly while you are parsing the html code then only it will download parallelly but when it is executing it will block the rendering only during the downloading time it can download parallelly but while it is executing it will block the rendering and later on while after the javascript code is executed it will resume back the html so this is about the async script so coming to the deferred script if you keep defer so what happens whole html page while it is parsing so you can it will download the javascript javascript page and once whole html is downloaded and after the dom content event is triggered then it will execute the javascript page it will execute the javascript file so this is the advantages of this async and sync differ so they will help us to eliminate the render blocking apart from async the differ is more uh, advanced thing like uh, it will help a lot like it will not interrupt at all during the download phase and during the execution phase whereas the async it will it will uh, not interrupt in the download page but while it is executing it will interrupt a bit so coming to the things like these async and differ you need you can keep only to the external urls you should not keep to the for example if you want to download a file which is present in the local like if you want to load index.js file so it's not like uh, this will not work for the internal uh, javascript scripts it will only work to the external urls so that is the main point here we need to understand and coming to the one more difference between async and differ is like async there will be no order as soon as it sees this script it will be executed there will be no order particular order to be executed but whereas differ it will uh, it will download the scripts in a given sequential order so these are some of the differences between async and differ so coming to the third question so we have third question the difference between a block element block inline and inline block elements so let me explain you this so before explaining this block inline and uh, inline block elements first thing we need to understand is every html element by default it will have a display property it will have a display property for a, those display property like uh, for these elements the display property would be block by default like uh, we know the ma uh, main one would be the div so this would be these are the examples of the block level elements for these elements the default display property is block whereas coming to the inline elements the display property these are some of the examples of the inline elements for these elements the display property by default it would be inline okay now let's understand these differences so for example uh, we will uh, open one more uh, file which is uh, related to the semantic uh, i mean uh, one second so i will draw it i will uh, take a new one so if this is the web page the block element it will occupy entire width the block level element it will occupy entire width as we see the div 
H1, P, section, all these elements are an examples for the block level elements. These block level elements will start from the new line. If you use one more block level element, that will be starting from the new line. It will start in the new line like this. So these are block level elements. These will occupy entire width, entire width of the page. So coming to the inline elements. So this will have the height and width properties can be kept to this block level elements. Coming to inline elements, they will only occupy the width. So how much is its content? That much it will be occupying. So the best example is span. So inline for the inline elements, the best example is span. The span will occupy only the content of the element. So here in the for the inline elements, it will not occupy entire width. It will only occupy some width. And the inline element will not start from the new lines. It will be. Uh, like this only in the same line only the inline elements will be there it will not take a new line to define itself okay coming to inline block elements so what are there so for the inline elements you can't keep width and height okay width and height if you even if you keep the width and height for the inline elements also it will not take the width and height for the inline elements what if if you are going to use inline elements and if you want to adjust the width and height so for inline elements, we can't keep width and height. But if you want to use inline elements and you want to adjust the width and height, in these cases, you need to use the inline block elements. So that's the, in that way, you can use the inline block elements where you can give the width and height of an element as well. So this is the example of the inline block element. It, it can be like this. So it means you are adjusting its width and height. So it will not start from a new line. So it is also same like inline element, but only the difference is it can, it, if you give width and height, it will have its impact on these elements. So you can see the difference with the default display property. These are the inline elements. Span would be the best example for the inline elements, and they would be the best example for the block level elements. So this is the difference between the inline block and inline block elements. Hope you understand the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos.